Hey folks, Uber here. Today we are going to go over the Lua script console as part of our event editor tutorial. You'll use this quite a bit and it is extraordinarily useful. Even if you don't use it as part of the event editor, you can use it to help populate your scenarios and bring a lot of information into it. So it allows you to run Lua without activating a trigger. Little interesting point though, you can have a trigger that's not part of an event that you can access from the Lua script console. So anything that you write in any of your script actions, you can put a print function into. Now the print function doesn't show to the player, but if you have the Lua script console open, when your events run, you can get a printout of whatever information you wanna see. So if you have something that you're trying to figure out a range or a bearing or a depth, and you're wondering why this isn't working like you think it should, you can write a very descriptive print statement that steps through that action. Sub detected at this depth. Trigger did not fire because it didn't meet some criteria. Now, one thing you can do in the Lua script console is you can use what's the unit X, unit Y, and unit C. Uh, unit X is gonna be any unit that sets off the trigger. So if it's a unit enters area, you can query that and get that uh, unit's information using unit X. Unit Y is, make sure I get this right here, it is the detecting unit when you have a unit detected trigger. And unit C is the unit that has been detected, but it's as a contact, not as the full unit. That way you can treat it as a contact and query it from there. Now, probably the biggest thing you're going to use the Lua script console for is you can step through a very complex Lua code and then do it little bit by little bit. You can run one line, test it, make sure it gives you what you want, and then I'll show you what I do as far as using uh, Visual Studio Code to kind of save it in little snippets. And then you can build that up until you get the behavior that you want. Now down below, we kind of have our uh, example that we used before, where we're getting some information, we're getting doing some damage to a ship, we're making a comparison. You can run all of that and test it right in the window. So we're gonna jump over to CMO and here we go. Now the scenario I have today has a single use airbase. It has two reference points over the Himalaya mountains. If we go to the sides, we have one side, that's it. The only information that's here. We have a single mission called the suicide run and nothing else. There's no other units that are here. Now I mentioned Visual Studio Code, and I am gonna drag this over so you can guys get a look at it here. So Visual Studio Code is a development environment. If you get it and you load up a Lua file, it'll give you all this nice highlighting. And there's a lot of other visual tricks it can use to help you determine if you're looking at an integer, if you're looking at a string, if you're looking at a comment, a function, and you know you can click things, it'll highlight the ones with the same names. You can get an idea on the side what you're looking at. Uh, one thing to do if it doesn't come loaded with the Lua library, uh, you have to add it as an extension. Otherwise, you can click down below and pick your language. Uh, you can auto detect if it's a .lua file. Otherwise, you just scroll down until you see Lua. Now, how do you get to the Lua script console? Click editor. Lua script console and it'll pull up. The top side is what you will uh, see as it returning. The bottom side is where you type. Now you can select functions here that the game has. I don't really use this. Uh, I prefer to work off of uh, the Visual Studio code and copy and paste over. Now one recent addition they have, this is kind of a pseudo IDE where you'll see some coloring when you drop it in here. Uh, anybody who's ever had to do a lot of Lua work and trying to do it just black and white can be really tough after going from uh, an IDE. So the first thing we are going to do is I'm going to make a plane. And make sure that I got it here. We have a send edit, scenario edit, add unit. All of this you can find in the command Lua uh, GitHub or you can find examples of this on the wiki. It's going to add an air unit. On the side, Mercs, we're going to call it a plane. Database ID, loadout ID. We need to know where to put it, so we need a latitude and a longitude. 
in altitude, in heading. Some functions require more. Sometimes you can get away with less. We hit run. We see no errors. We just see it here, but look at that. We got an airplane, an F-15C. Pull the side here. So we got an F-15. We just placed the plane. Now, if you click this again, you'll place another plane right next to that plane. So we will, you can select it and delete it. And you can do the same thing up above if you want to clean this up. You can delete that as well. Then we can select our next bit of code. This one is going to get a little bit fancier. And you'll see why, see what I mean in a second here. So we have a loop. We have four planes equals one kind of eight, one do. So we're going to do this for loop where we're going to, for the variable planes, we're going to do it eight times by ones. So we're going to make a bunch of air units with a unit name, JAS39C Gripen number. This dot dot appends the variable planes to it. So every time it runs through, it's going to go one, two, three, etc., all the way until it gets to eight. We have our loadout, our database side, but this time instead of specifying latitude and longitude, we're specifying the base. We can click run. We see no errors here. Close this out. And we go to our base down below, and we've got eight Grippins named JOS 39C Grippin number one through number eight. Nice. Go back to our Lua script console, and we're going to assign them to a mission. Assign six of them. Do another for loop. We're going to do it uh, six times. Suicide run. We hit run. And oh, look at that. We have an error was not found in the scenario unit list. And this is what's really nice about using the editor, or the event console, rather. If you are just, say, type this code, and you put it into an action, and you tried to run it, and you kept saying, well, why is my stuff not happening? You can put it here and get an idea. Now, because we only have one line of code, it's just going to tell us here. But say we had 30 lines of code and we ran it, it would actually tell you, hey, there's a problem on line number 25. So what's the problem? I have my name improperly typed. So if we go back, we type it in, we get it properly, and boom. Now if we go back to our base, we'll see that six of these are now assigned to the mission, as we wanted them to. Now another useful thing you can do, and if you've ever worked with damaging units, you like to know what you're damaging and what's been damaged and how to damage it more and if it's undamaged and what's available to be damaged. So we're going to create a local variable called unit. Now be careful using unit. This is kind of sloppy in my part. Unit can be referenced as other things later on. So it's usually better to have you know, a triggering unit or you know, a little more descriptive name. We're going to get a unit, side mercs, Unit name JAS39C, Grippin number one. We're going to print out the unit and print the unit dot components. You're going to see this a lot. And I'll show you why in a second. Oh boy, look at that wall of text. So we got the unit. We put it into the variable unit. And then we have inside of it, this first part is the entire unit. So you got this brace. This is everything inside of it. So you can check or query unit.type, unit.subtype, unit.name, unit.side, unit.guid. This is very important. It's a unique identifier. You can go all the way down and get all this stuff. And we did unit.components. As you can see, it's not in this list, and there's a way that you can iterate through to get everything in the list. But in this case, we get a big list of all the different uh, components on that aircraft. So we will jump next to a completely different example. And you can use this to build your scenario, or you can use this to kick it off. Remember them scenario loaded triggers? You can use that to start of uh, populate your scenario. Now, if we look, we're going to go to our weather, and we'll take it down to oh, oh nothing and just leave it here. Hopefully this works like I want it to. So we can take in, and we can put a function here. So what, what does that mean? That means that 
we can call this anytime we want once it's been loaded. No, if we close the scenario out and try to do this again, it won't work. This only works this time. There are ways that you can do, uh, you know, every time somebody loads it up, all these Lua triggers will happen or just the first time. But it's going to take and alter the weather conditions. So we can hit run and it just, again, no errors. It doesn't do anything. So we can just uh, take our function weather drift. This is uh, some of Apache's code, by the way. We can hit run. We have weather drift. And now you can see our weather has been populated with well, a random set of weather. So if you were playing a scenario and every four hours you wanted the weather to slowly drift, you could have a regular time that would slowly kick this off and then also tell the player exactly what they're looking at. Now the next thing we can do, another function that's uh, one of Apache's, is we're going to get a list of side, units on the side. And we are querying and putting it into a result. We're returning that result. So that's the function right up here. And now we're printing that function. So we'll look at this again here. We have the function generate list of units on side. Inside the parentheses, we have side name. That's the variable that we have to feed it. This is what we're interested in. We have local result equals the VP get side, the side equals side name dot units. So we're going to query all of the units there and we're going to return the result. So what's that look like? Print generate list of units on side of Mercs. And now we're going to print what this returns. And you can see above, we've got all these units. Uh, we've got the base, we've got the F-15 cold plane, and we've got the eight Grippens. This can be really, really useful. And I can't understate this. When you have a whole bunch of units and you want to be able to select a certain type, this is a really neat way to do it, especially if the player has the ability to add uh, different units than what you think right off the bat. So what else can we do with this? We're going to jump into another fun one. So we have a function that makes a random position. You have a latitude minimum, latitude max, longitude minimum, longitude max. And it's going to use this random stuff, and it's going to pick a position right in the middle. So if we run it, you know, it returns to us a latitude and a longitude. So what do we do with that? I'll show you. So we can take and delete that because we have the function loaded. We can take and we're going to take a we'll run that. And what we should be doing is we're going to get random position from 30 to 35, 95 to 100. We're going to print that return position and then we're going to print the return altitude or latitude. So we're going to see the latitude that we put it at right here, 35.5. And then we're going to have a down pilot named Mycroft Holmes. And we're feeding that, that variable dot latitude and that variable dot longitude. And hopefully this worked. Yep, there it is. There's Mycroft Holmes. There's his aircraft wreckage wreck. Voila, now we've placed Mycroft. Cool. But we can do something even more. Say we're making a down pilot trigger and you got to get an aircraft into there. I mean, we could manually click and put all this stuff around there for reference points, but, but what if our random spot puts them somewhere different? We need a way to be able to take his current location and then work off it from there. So what does that look like? We have got another function that's going to create a circle of reference points around a unit. We have to tell it the unit ID, the number of points, the radius, the prefix. Now, I should highlight here, this is not directly coming from Warfare Sims. This is a function that you know, Rory Apache wrote, but that anybody can write. You could write this, you can modify this, you can change it to do however you want. Just step through it bit by bit, and you'd be surprised what you can come up with. So we hit Run. We've now populated that function. We'll get it out of there. And then next, I'm going to start fresh here and we will delete Mycroft. We're going to put him back in in a second. So now we have where we've got our unit. And then we're going to take that GUID, that distinct unit ID for our downed pilot. 
That's why I repopulated it. So we're going to run this first bit. It's going to place Mycroft Homes. And then we're going to create a circle of reference points around his unit. Who? The downpilot.guid. We're going to have 16 points at 30 miles, and we're going to call it Detection Zone. We click Run. Close this. Zoom in, and now we have all of our points around Mycroft Holmes, who is now in a slightly different position than he was before. So there, we're going to wrap that up at this. You can get a good idea of what you can do with the uh, Event Editor console. Don't have to even uh, tie it into an event. You can just use it to build stuff and put stuff together. Now, if you run into problems because you've never done this before, there's a lot of good resources at the Lua Legion at the Matrix forums. And if you're trying to do something, a lot of the times you just type in the editor function you're trying to use. So if you're trying to add a unit, just go to Matrix forums, go to search and type send edit underscore add unit and see what other people have posted. There's a lot of history there and a lot of really helpful people. And if you get stuck and you're trying to do something creative, just go ahead and post. A lot of good people there that will help you out. All right, there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, and please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something else. Otherwise, uh, make your scenarios, share them with everybody, and uh, we can all enjoy them together. Thanks much.